Okay, so how I've always kind of envisioned this seems that there's kind of three aspects to timber framing. The first always encompasses a layout. So this is kind of the area that I foresee having um, layout equipment. There's your tape measure, maybe a chalk line, uh, maybe uh, your pencils, uh, speed square and such. The, your, th those tools, compass, whatever it is you use. There's a couple things that I don't have, that'll, but they'll all, all the things will fit in here. And it's a, good, it's a nice good size where they won't be crowded, where I don't have to pick through things. You can reach in and simply grab, grab what you need. The second category uh, or divider over here is I, I had intended for my timber framing chisels. Now I've worked with typically th three, three. So a nice, you new subscribers, maybe you haven't seen this. This is a, this is my, one of my uh, most prized tools. This is a uh, timber framing slick that was hand forged in 1837 uh, by the White Company. Probably, arguably, or I'll argue it because I'm very partial to it, uh, one of the finest timber framing slicks ever made. It's an absolute beauty with a vintage handle and it is exceedingly sharp. The man that I bought this from was in his 80s and this belonged to his grandfather who was a timber framer. And he told me, when I bought it, the edge was in terrible condition. This, by the way, is the sharpest tool that I own. Uh, he said that his brother, when he was little, he remember his brother uh, practicing um, throwing this and trying to stick it into a tree. And so you can imagine what the edge looked like. So I uh, had to search high and low. It took a long time to find someone that had the skill and the ability and the equipment to do a flat 30 degree grind on this without doing any type of, uh, type of a concave or a hollow grind. I didn't want that. I wanted it perfectly flat. Uh, and I did find someone, ouch, I cut myself every time I touch this thing. Uh, it's a beautiful tool. You can see right there, you see that line of demarcation there? That is a hard, high carbon, hard steel. It's the cutting edge that's been forge welded into the softer steel body. So what that gives you is that gives you, you can see the line right there, do you see those two distinctive lines? Yeah, you've got the high carbon on the bottom and you've got the, the softer steel, which gives it a toughness and a dur durability on the top. Think you're gonna find that today? I don't know of anyone that does that outside of maybe John Neiman. I think that they do it, uh, but I don't know anyone else. Very rare, but what, uh, what a treasure this is. So I'm getting off a side bit there. So the timber framing slick is very long. This being 36, is in, 36 inches inside, you can see it takes up almost all of that. Over here, I've got my timber framing chisels. Uh, you're going to have two chisels you work with primarily. Your main chisel, for me anyway, is inch and a half. These are Robert Sorby's from England. Chisels here, a lot of wear and use on these. And this here is my two inch. And I don't use a two inch uh, all that often. Uh, it's it, not because it's not a good chisel, but it's just so big and so heavy. I find that I, I've not cut a lot of two inch mortises. If I did cut two inch mortises, I would use it more often. I do use it, but not as often as the inch and a half. This is my bread and butter. This is my go-to chisel uh, right here. So those I think will probably go like this right here. And I've got a new chisel, another chisel that's pretty common and pretty much standard kit for, for uh, timber framers is, is a corner chisel. And this one right here, you can see, one that I restored was a gift to me. And uh, the handle, I turned on my lathe, which was another gift to me, which I'm going to talk about here in a minute. I haven't used this yet, but this is for cleaning out corners of mortises. I'm looking forward to, to using that too. That's a beautiful, beautiful tool, isn't it? That's really special, really a special tool. I'm going to make a sheath for that. I've got, I'm going to, or, I've got leather tools coming from Japan. Uh, and I'm going to be doing some more videos of leather work. I'm going to make a, going to figure out how to make a really nice sheath for that. I don't like having my chisels unsheathed. So next, a really important tool is a timber framer square, which is just a Stanley, regular Stanley combination square. If you don't know this, uh, the configuration of the traditional square, it came out of timber framing. This inch and a half 
It was used to measure the width of an inch and a half mortise, this two inch for a two inch mortise. And uh, there's the, the to, most people don't know how to use a square. There's a lot to use in a square. It is an incredible, incredibly versatile tool. And that fits in there really nice, kind of against the, against the divider with only this sticking up. Th these squares can be kind of hard to pack around and carry. Uh, next is my mallet. Some people prefer a heavier mallet. I've used this for hours and hours. It's a 30 ounce shop fox. It's, I think it's the heaviest one that they make and I really like it. I like that the, it's got the rubber on it. it is really non-skid. It doesn't tear up my chisels. I have beat and beat and beat on these and these are the original handles and no problem and it doesn't slip off. So when you're really watching, maybe you're watching your cutting edge and, and you, you don't want to hit, you know, you're not watching your hand. Um, if you miss strike, Oftentimes, because it's so sticky, it, will, it won't glance and hit your hand. Because 30 ounces at a hard swing will break your knuckle. I, I know. So that fits perfectly in here, just like that. And that that's nice and it's out of the way. So another tool uh, that I use a lot, um, for usually for stripping wane off a log, that's the bark that remains on corners and stuff, or split corners, is a draw knife. So this draw knife here um, was, uh, was also was a gift to me uh, from my old neighbor. I got this draw knife from the same uh, gentleman that I got the timber framing, the white timber framing slick from. And this also belonged to his grandfather and has been well, well used. You can see here, and it's a, it's a nice big long draw knife, you can see how the edge, how many times, how often it's been sharpened there. I've got to clean that up. I was just using that strip in a log. So, but uh, that is a, a beautiful, a beautiful uh, draw knife. Okay. And that fits in here. Nice, draw knives are pretty long. Uh, a tool that I, I, I use, um, I haven't used yet, but I know I'm going to use is the small Grand Force Brooks hatchet. This is really good, a little hand hatchet for doing a small detail work or knocking things off. And I've always uh, kind of, I've always wanted something like that to grab when I was working. Uh, I never had one, but that fits in here. And then uh, there's two tools left is uh, my saw, my golden guinea from Declan uh, from Ireland. And uh, I'm going to be doing some sharpening videos on these pretty soon. So look forward to that. And that fits in here. Very nice. I'm going to make a little wooden protector for it. I've got to reset the teeth and sh sharpen that. And then finally, uh, a 24 inch stainless steel rule uh, that I really like for layout. And there's a couple things that I have on my workbench that I would take to, you know, my combination square and my my knife and, and a couple other things that would fit in there, but they'll go in there, but they would all fit pretty carefully. So it's really not too heavy because we're not talking about a, a, a lot of tools here. We're talking about uh, a, pretty, a pretty small set of tools. But what's so interesting about this it, uh, timber framing or what appeals to me is that with this small set of tools, you can do such big projects. You really don't need uh, anything more than that, anything really more specialized. There's drilling, of course, the, the drill that uh, our, um, a, a, b a beam drill or the breast drill like I just restored, that will be used. And that's kind of a separate, I think that will go in its separate toolbox because that kind of comes into play towards the end. No, not necessarily. I, I might rethink that, but uh, we'll, we'll revisit all that stuff. But there's room for that. I mean, if, we, if I want to grab that bit or that breast drill, which I have right here, right? Could we not simply... Uh, take out, uh, you see right there, it's coming back, it's biting me that I put that washer on there. And so several of you guys pointed out that there's a detent. Let's, look, let's take a look at that right now. Are we in too much of a hurry to, to talk about some of this stuff? No, let's just, let's just talk about it. Okay, so it never, it never ceases to amaze me, impress me. What an amazing, tremendous amount of knowledge um, subscribers, our, my subscribers possess. Look right there. I haven't looked at it since I saw the videos, but you guys are smart. Look at that. So right here, what I was complaining about, or what I didn't like was, is when I, this here, when I had it on there, it was just flopping loose. And when I would pick it up, 
this would, the, the drill or the ring gear would fall out. Because this, this has to come back and forth to change the speed. And several of you said, you know, you're not going to like, you're going to start using this and you're not going to like having a screwdriver and having to have a tool every time you want to make this change. And I thought, you know, that makes total sense. And when I was polishing this, I looked at it and I thought, I wonder why that's got two holes on it. And I thought, well, that just means that it goes in here. But I didn't realize that there was a detent. What is a detent? A detent is usually a spring and a ball that uh, retains or keeps something in its place. And if you look closely in there, and you guys pointed this out, I didn't even notice it. I can't believe I didn't see that. There, the spring's still in there. So what we need is a tiny, tiny ball bearing uh, to, to that will slip into that hole and that will hold that in position. I love detents. I think it's an elegant and beautiful thing. Uh, I like the way they click and sound. So uh, thank you for that. So I'm gonna go, I'm actually, I'm gonna go look in my granddad's toolbox right now and see if I can find one. I'll make a, just a short video on that. So, but let's say that uh, we want to put this in our timber framers toolbox, right? So we've got our bits. What size bits do we need? We don't usually very, very many. We need like an inch and a half for doing drilling out mortises, that can be helpful. We need uh, maybe a one inch, depending on what size trenails that we're using. But look how, look at this here, this just, this will just go right in there. It fits in there perfectly. We can put that in there and, and, and our drill bit, let's grab it. You've seen these, there. There's an inch and a half drill bit. There's one that I typically use with mortise. I found these on eBay. They were brand new in the original boxes. These are the B business right here. Good luck finding those. I could put those in there. But that's a, that's a good kit and it's not too heavy. You know, that's a, easy to take out of the back of the truck, to pick up and move to the other side of what you're working on, have everything in one place. I think it's real nice. I don't think it's juvenile at all. I think it. Uh, I think it's a real toolbox for a real carpenter. I really do. What could make it better? Oh, make a better wood. Of course, would be would have been nicer. But uh, I'm not unhappy with the pine. I think uh, I'll be careful with it. I think it'll last me a long, long time. So, um, so that's that. We get our little chamfered edge there. Stiff resistance there, not too hard, but that brass.